The Heroidus, or Epistulae Heroidum, is a collection of fifteen epistolary poems composed by Ovid in Latin elegiac couplets and presented as though written by a selection of aggrieved heroines of Greek and Roman mythology in address to their heroic lovers who have in some way mistreated, neglected, or abandoned them. A further set of six poems, widely known as the Double Heroidus and numbered 16 to 21 in modern scholarly editions, follows these individual letters, and presents three separate exchanges of paired epistles one each from a heroic lover to his absent beloved and from the heroine in return, arguably some of Ovid's most influential works. One point that has greatly contributed to the mystique of the Heroidus and to the reverberations they have produced within the writings of later generations is directly attributable to Ovid himself. In the third book of his Ars Amatoria, Ovid makes the claim that in writing these fictional epistolary poems in the persona of famous heroines, rather than from a first-person perspective, he created an entirely new literary genre, recommending parts of his poetic output as suitable reading material to his assumed audience of Roman women. Ovid wrote of his heroidis, Del TB compositor cantator epistola voce, ignotum hoc ali is a real nova vitopus. The full extent of Ovid's originality in this matter has been a point of scholarly contention. E.J. Kenny, for instance, notes that Novavit is ambiguous, either invented or renewed, cunningly obscuring without explicitly disclaiming Ovid's debt to Propertius or Arethusa for the original idea, in spite of various interpretations of Propertius 4.3. Consensus nevertheless concedes to Ovid the lion's share of the credit in the thorough exploration of what was, in its time, a highly innovative poetic form, dating and authenticity. The exact dating of the Heroidus, as with the overall chronology of the Ovidian corpus, remains a matter of debate. As Peter E. Knox notes, T. Here is no consensus about the relative chronology of this S.C. early phase of Ovid's career, a position which has not advanced significantly since that comment was made. Exact dating is hindered not only by a lack of evidence, but by the fact that much of what is known at all comes from Ovid's own poetry. One passage in the second book of Ovid's Amores has been adduced especially often in this context. Knox notes that T. his passage provides the only external evidence for the date of composition of the Heroides listed here. The only collection of Heroides attested by Ovid therefore antedates at least the second edition of the Amores and probably the first, on this view. The most probable date of composition for at least the majority of the collection of single Heroides ranges between c. 25 and 16 BC, if indeed their eventual publication predated that of the assumed first edition of the Amores in that latter year. Regardless of absolute dating, the evidence nonetheless suggests that the single Heroides represents some of Ovid's earliest poetic efforts. Questions of authenticity, however, have often inhibited the literary appreciation of these poems. Joseph Farrell identifies three distinct issues of importance to the collection in this regard. Individual interpolations within single poems, the authorship of entire poems by a possible Ovidian impersonator, and the relation of the double heroidus to the singles, coupled with the authenticity of that secondary collection. Discussion of these issues has been a focus, even if tangentially, of many treatments of the Heroides in recent memory. As an example following these lines, for some time scholars debated over whether this passage from the Amores, corroborating, as it does, only the existence of her, 1 to 2, 4 to 7, 10, 11, and very possibly of 12, 13, and 15, could be cited fairly as evidence for the inauthenticity of at least the letters of Briseis, Hermione, Deianira, and Hypermnestrae, if not also those of Medea, Laodamia, and Sappho. Stephen Hines argues, however, that this list constitutes only a poetic catalogue. 
in which there was no need for Ovid to have enumerated every individual epistle. This assertion has been widely persuasive, and the tendency amongst scholarly readings of the later 1990s and following has been towards careful and insightful literary explication of individual letters either proceeding under the assumption of or with an eye towards proving Ovidian authorship. Other studies are strewing direct engagement with this issue in favor of highlighting the more ingenious elements and thereby demonstrating the high value of individual poems in the collection have essentially subsumed the authenticity debate, implicating it through a tacit equation of high literary quality with Ovidian authorship. This trend is visible especially in the most recent monographs on the Heroidis. On the other hand, some scholars have taken a completely different route, ascribing the whole collection to one or two Ovidian imitators. The collection the paired letters of the double heroides are not outlined here. See the relevant section of that article for the double epistles. The single heroides are written from the viewpoints of the following heroines. I, Penelope writes to her famed husband, Odysseus, a hero of the Trojan War, towards the end of his long absence. 2. Phyllis, the daughter of Lycurgus, writes to her lover Demophoon, the son of Theseus, king of Athens, after he fails in his promised return from his homeland. 3. Briseis, the daughter of Briseis, writes to Achilles, the central hero of the Trojan War and focal character of Homer's Iliad, urging him to accept her as part of a package deal from Agamemnon, leader of the Greek forces at Troy, and to return to battle against the Trojans. I.V. Phaedra, wife of Theseus, writes to her stepson, Hippolytus, confessing her semi-incestuous and illicit love for him. V. The nymph Enona, by Hellenistic tradition Paris's first wife, writes to Paris, son of Priam king of Troy, after he abandoned her to go on his famed journey to Sparta, and then returned with the abducted Helen of Sparta as a wife. Vi, Hypsipila, Queen of Lemnos, to Jason, after he abandoned her for Medea. 7. Dido to Aeneas, on his departure to Italy. 8. Hermione, daughter of Menelaus, to Orestes, son of Agamemnon and Clytemnestra, urging him to save her from marriage to Achilles' son, Pyrrhus. Ix. Deianira, daughter of Aeneas, king of Aetolia, to her husband Hercules, after he laid down his weapons to be with Ile, the daughter of Eurythus, king of Echalia, ex Ariadne to Theseus after he abandoned her on the island of Naxos on his way back to Athens. He does not marry Phaedra until later. She, Canais, daughter of Aeolus, to her brother and lover, Macarius before killing herself following the death of their baby at the hands of their father. 12. Medea to Jason, after he abandoned her to marry Crusa. 13. Laodamia, the daughter of Acastus, to her husband Protesilaus, urging him not to take too many risks in the Greeks' attack on Troy. 14. Hypomnestra to her husband, Lyncius, calling for him to save her from death at the hands of her father, Danaeus. 15. Sappho to her ex-lover Phaon, after he left her. Translations and influence. The Heroides were popularized by the Loire Valley poet Baudry of Burgiel in the late 11th century, and Heloise used them as models in her famous letters to Abelard. A translation, Les Van Gt A Una Pistra Divide, was made of this work at the end of the 15th century by the French poet Octavien de saint Gelles who later became Bishop of Angoulême. While saint Gelles' translation does not do full justice to the original, it introduced many non-Latin readers to Ovid's fictional letters and inspired many of them to compose their own Heroidian-style epistles. Perhaps the most successful of these were the Catra Epistra Divide by André de la Vigne, a friend and colleague of saint Gelles. Later translations and creative responses to the Heroides include Jean Le Maire de Belge's premier repetit de Lament Vert, Fausto André Lini's verse epistles, Michel Dambas's Contra Pistra Divide, and Juan Rodriguez de la Camera's Versario, a partial translation of the Heroides. 
Classics scholar W. M. Spackman argues the Heroidus influenced the development of the European novel. Of Helen's reply to Paris, Spackman writes, its mere 268 lines contain in embryo everything that has, since, developed into the novel of dissected motivations that is one of our glories, from La Princesse de Cleves, Manon Lescaut, and Les Liaisons Dangerouses. To Stent Hall and Proust, the Loeb Classical Library presents the Heroidus with the Mores in Overdie. Penguin Books first published Harold Isbell's translation in 1990. Isbell's translation uses unrhymed couplets that generally alternate between 11 and 9 syllables. A translation in rhymed couplets by Daryl Hine appeared in 1991. Selected Bibliography for references specifically relating to that subject, please see the relevant bibliography of the double heroidis. Editions Dory. P. Ovidi Nasonis Epistuli Heroidum. Schauerman. And Gould. P. Ovid. Heroidis and Amores. Commentaries Kenny. J. Ovid Heroidis XVI21. Knox. E. Ovid. Heroidis. Select Epistles. Roebuck. T. Heroides I with notes and cum. Literary overviews and textual criticism. Anderson. S. The Heroides in J. W. Bins Ovid. 49-83. Arena. Ovidia e Lydia Logia Augusti. I motivi del Heroides ed il loro significato. Latimus 54.4. 822-41. Beck. Diapistuli Heroidum 18 and 19 des Corpus Ovidianum. Courtney. Ovidian and Non-Ovidian Heroidis. Bulletin of the Institute of Classical Studies of the University of London 12. 63-6. Underscore underscore underscore. Ecdits Critique. Ovidian and Non-Ovidian Heroidis again. CJ 93. 157-66. Farrell, Reading and Writing the Heroidis, Harvard Studies in Classical Philology 98, 307-338, Fulkerson, The Ovidian Heroine as Author, Reading, Writing, and Community in the Heroidis, Ain't Say, The Authenticity of Ovid Heroidis 12 Reconsidered, Bulletin of the Institute of Classical Studies of the University of London 38, 94-8, Jacobson, Ovid's Heroidis, Kennedy, F. Epistolarity, The Heroidis, in P. R. Hardy The Cambridge Companion to Ovid, 217-32, Knox, E. Ovid's Medea and the Authenticity of Heroidis 12, Harvard Studies in Classical Philology 90, 207-23, underscore underscore underscore, The Heroidis, Elegiac Voices, in B. W. Boyd Brill's Companion to Ovid, 117-39, Lachman, Kleiner Schriften zur Klassischen Philologie, B.D. 2. Lindheim, Male and Female, Epistolary Narrative in Desire in Ovid's Heroidis, Lingenberg, Das Erste Buch der Heroiden Briefe, Ecdits Gritischer unto such Ungern. Palmer, completed by L.C. Purser, P. Ovidi Nasonus Heroidis, with the Greek translation of Planudes. Ran, Ovid's Elegiacia Epistle, Anticunda Bendland 7, 105-120. Reeve, D. Notes on Ovid's Heroidis, Classical Quarterly 23, 324-338. Rosenmeyer, A. Ovid's Heroides and Tristia, Voices from Exile, Ramus 26.1, 29-56, reprinted in Knox, 217-37, Smith, A. Fantasy, Myth, and Love Letters, Text and Tale in Ovid's Heroides, Arethusa 27, 247-73. Spensow, Readers and Writers in Ovid's Heroidis, Transgressions of Genre and Gender, Stein Metz, 
Diliterisha formed air epistuli heroid amobids, Gymnasium 94, 128-45, Stro, heroides ovidian e cur epistolus scribant, in G. Papanetti Ovidia Poet of Della Memoria, 201-44, Tarrant, J. The Authenticity of the Letter of Sappho to Phaon, Harvard Studies in Classical Philology 85, 133-53, Verducci, Ovid's Toy Shop of the Heart, Analyses of Individual Epistles Barchese, Review of Hintermeyer, Journal of Roman Studies 85, 325-7, Underscore Underscore Underscore, Speaking Volumes, Narrative in Intertext in Ovid and Other Latin Poets, Eds, and Trans, M, Fox and S, Marchese, Continuities, 9-28, translated and reprinted from material i.e. discussionally polanally cdei testi classis i-16, narrativity and convention in the heroidis, 29-48. Translated and reprinted from material i.e. discussionally polanally cdei testi classis i-19, future reflexive, two modes of illusion and the heroidus 105-28, reprinted from Harvard Studies in Classical Philology 95, Castle I, Enin, Apollo Pastor, Elamor Amidike Bile. Geoshia Vidiani Sudai and Topus Elegiaco, Material i.e. Discussionally Polanali CDEI Testi Classis I 28, 85 100, Fulkerson, Writing Yourself to Death, Strategies of Reading in Heroides II, Material i.e. Discussionally Polanali CDEI Testi Classis I 48, 145 65, Underscore 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 Sympathetic Magic, A Study of Heroides 13, American Journal of Philology 123, 61-87, underscore underscore underscore, Chain Mail, Hypermestra and the Dual Readership of Heroides 14, Transactions of the American Philological Association 133, 123-146, Hines, Medea and Novid. Scenes from the life of an intertextual heroine, material i.e. discussionally polanally cdei testi classis i30, 9-47, underscore underscore underscore, first among women, Ovid, and the traditions of, exemplary, catalogue, in Amor, Roma, M, Braunton R, Mayer, Proceedings of the Cambridge Philological Society Sup. 22, 123-42, Hintermeyer, M, Die Brief Para in Ovid's Heroides, Palingunzia 41, Jolivet, J.C., Illusion A Fiction Epistle Air Dans Les Heroides, Recherches sur l'intertextualité Ovidienne, Collection de L, École Française de Rome, 289, Kennedy, F. The Epistolary Mode and the First of Ovid's Heroides, Classical Quarterly N. S. 34, 413-22, reprinted in Knox, 69-85, Lindheim, Omnia Vincit Amor, or, why E. Nonna should have known it would never work out, Material I. E. Discussionally Polanali CDEI Testi Classis I-44, 83-101. Rosati, Protasilau, Paride, E. L. Amanti Elegiaco, and Medello Americo in Ovidia, Maya 43.2, 103-14, underscore underscore underscore, La Religia al Feminile, La Heroides di Ovidia, Materiali Discussionally Polanali CDEI Testi Classa Site 29, 71-94, Vesi. W.T. Humor and Humanity in Ovid's Heroides, Arethusa 9, 91-110. V.R. Des Poems Domiro Heroides Divide. La Ari Acute CIT Epic Sun Interpretation L.A. Yac Bulletin de l'Association Guillaume Budet Sir. 4-3. Scholarship of Tangential Significance Armstrong. Ovid and His Love Poetry, especially. C.H.S. 2 and 4, Hardy, 
R. Ovid's Poetics of Illusion, Holtzberg, Playing with His Life, Ovid's Autobiographical References, Lampo 30, 4-19, reprinted in Knox. 51 to 68, underscore underscore underscore, Ovid, The Poet and His Work, Trans, G.M., Goshgarian, James, L., Learn Girls and Male Persuasion, Gender and Reading in Roman Love Elegy, Especially, C.H., 5, Kaufman, S., Discourses of Desire, Gender, Genre, and Epistolary Fictions, Knox, E., Oxford Readings in Ovid, Zweilin, Diovid und Virgil Revision in Tiberische Zeit, 